Sup guys, it's Alex here and welcome to another edition of the Bracketology Update. This one is for January 11th and man, I just gotta say up front, what are my Kentucky Wildcats doing this year? I mean, we just we were just 20 point favorites at home against South Carolina, who's one of the worst teams in the SEC. They lost by 20 at home to Furman. They just lost by 40 to Tennessee. And we just lost them at home looking lifeless. I mean, I don't know what to do at this point. I mean, Calipari, you've heard rumblings from a lot of Kentucky fans over the last couple of years. Haven't made it to the Final Four since 2015. Haven't or didn't make the champ or tournament a couple of years ago back in 2020. Then last year, losing to St. Peter's this year, just not beating a tournament team. And then losing to South Carolina here. I mean, there are calls for Calipari set. I don't know if I'm in that boat or not. But here, as a UK fan in Lexington, I know I sound entitled for sure. I know that. But we have a gold standard, and Kentucky over the last few years just isn't meeting that gold standard. And it's just time Calipari can get the talent to Lexington. But coaching-wise, I don't know what's happening. So that's just a little thing there, Kentucky. As you'll see here on the bubble in a second, it's not in the projected tournament field, but I just wanted to rant right there. I was just so just so defeated watching the game last night. But anyway, taking a look at the bracket watch, top overall seed is Kansas. Survived a scare last night against Oklahoma, but where it was able to battle out and get the victory. First team out is Virginia Tech there. And then the last team, team I just mentioned, is Oklahoma. They've been playing their way into the bubble right there. But taking a look at the bubble, speaking of that, last four buys are ill, or I guess this technically was as of yesterday before the games, which Joel had already posted like an updated kind of bubble watch on Twitter. And Kentucky was in was the last team in the first four out, so four teams out of the field. But taking a look at it right now, last four buys are Illinois, Kentucky, Northwestern, and New Mexico. Last four in are Mississippi State, Memphis, Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma. First four out are Virginia Tech, Utah State, Iowa, and UCF. And then the next four out are Penn State, Utah, Boise State, and Arizona State. So a lot of big names there on the bubble. A lot of big Power 5 programs. It'll be interesting to see how it shakes out as we're really starting to get into the meat and potatoes of conference play. But taking a look at the actual bracket itself here over in the Midwest Regional, we have Maryland up to a 9. Duke down to a 5, who's now number 24 in the uh, number 24 in the AP poll. They are in danger of falling out. They beat Boston College, but struggled to beat them, and that's just not the standard that Duke wants to set. They're having a down year. Also, Villanova. I don't even think I mentioned Villanova in any of my bracketologies, but in their first year without Jay Wright, it's, expe it's expected that they're having a down year, but to miss the tournament entirely, I don't know if that necessarily was in the cards, but I mean, that's just something that's happened in there. Marquette has a huge game tonight, I believe, against Connecticut, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in that game. They're up to a four here. Princeton's new to the field. Memphis down to an 11. Oklahoma new to the field. St. Mary's up to a seven. Northwestern new to the field. They've been playing very well recently. Arizona falling down to the two line. Then over there in the South Regional, we have Auburn up to an eight. NC State new to the field here as a nine seed as the automatic qualifier from the ACC. They're at the top of the standings as of or as of like Monday night, technically. Then we have Providence up to a five. They've been looking fantastic this year. Kent State down to a 12. Southern Mississippi new to the field. Xavier up to a three. They are looking good. They could make some noise in this tournament. Xavier coming back to life as a program. Wisconsin down to a seven. Then they lost again last night at home to Michigan State. New Mexico down to a 10. Then looking down there at the East Regional, we have Iowa State, or no, we have Michigan State up to an eight. Plus they beat Wisconsin after this two on the road, so they'll probably be up to a seven or six on Friday's Bracketology. West Virginia down to a nine. Iowa State, there we go, up to a four. Then we have TCU down to a six. Nevada new, up to an 11. Rutgers up to a seven. Clemson new to the field there as a 10, which I wonder why they're, I guess they're technically tied with NC State maybe because they're from the ACC too and they have an automatic qualifier. I don't know, it just could be how that shakes out. But then over there in the West, we have Houston retaking the one line. They are the number one team in the AP poll but number four here in the seed list, according to Joe Lenardi. Indiana down to an eight. They've been struggling lately. Kentucky, we talked about them. They're out of the field as of this recording. Baylor down to a five. Virginia down to a four, though they got a good win last night against North Carolina. 
Missouri up to a six, San Diego State up to a seven, and then Eastern Washington up to a 15 there. That part doesn't really matter. But taking a look here, we are going to make our predictions for the NCAA tournament based off of this bracketology. If you want to download this bracket, all you have to do is go to vertex42.com and there's like a 64 team bracket that you can fill out. And then I'll just update this Excel file every time there's a new bracketology. So that's how I kind of bit off this bracket. There's not really anything that you guys can go download. This bracket right here, like the old Bracketify site that was so good, but I mean, I wish I wish there was something like that that would be easier to record, but that's just kind of how it looks right now. I know it's not the most visually appealing thing, but brackets typically aren't. So making our predictions here, we'll start up here in the top left regional. Kansas will obviously beat the winner of Southern and Fairlot Dickinson. Then we are going to go with Creighton, the Blue Jays beating Maryland. Duke, I think, will be able to beat Dayton there along with Marquette over Princeton. And then I'm going to go with... Do I want to go with an upset here? Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go with Ohio State there. They've been kind of inconsistent, but I do like the program that they're building there. I'm going to go there. Arkansas, I will have beating Indiana State. Then we're going to go with an upset pick here with a 10 over 7, a classic spot for an upset. We're going with Northwestern over St. Mary's. Arizona then, I think, will be SIU Edwardsville. Then for a spot in the Sweet 16, we are going to have Kansas advancing on past Creighton, Marquette, the Golden Eagles with Shaka Smart moving on past Duke. Then Arkansas will be at Ohio State along with Arizona over Northwestern. Then for a spot in the Elite Eight, Kansas moving on past Marquette as much as I'd love to see Marquette win that matchup. I do think Kansas will win. And then we're going to have three seed Arkansas, which they have a huge game tonight against Alabama. That one should be very good. I think the spread's only like one point in favor of Arkansas. They are at home. That should be a fantastic game. But then for a spot in the Final Four, you guys know I've been doing this for the past couple of bracketologies. I'm going to go with Arkansas moving on past Kansas there. So now moving on to the top right regional, we are going to go with Purdue here moving on past Samford and Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Then we are going to go with NC State moving on past Auburn, though Auburn did get a good win. I think it was yesterday. I can't remember who they faced, but I'm pretty sure Auburn won that game. We're going to go with NC State over Auburn. Providence will end up beating Kent State. Then we're going to go with Kansas State over Southern Miss. Then I'm going to go with an upset pick here. I mean, this could also depend on the health of Armando Baycott. Then I'm going to go with Oklahoma State pulling off the victory over Mississippi State and then upsetting North Carolina, the preseason favorite to win it all. Then we're going to go with Xavier over UMass Lowell. Wisconsin falling to New Mexico. We're just going to have some chaos there. Both teams are kind of trending down right now. And then Tennessee moving on past Siena. Then for a spot in the Sweet 16, Purdue will advance on here past NC State. This would be a fantastic matchup to watch. Kansas State and Providence. Kansas State are probably out of their minds right now, and that's why I'm going to go with them, Kansas State. Then we're going to have Xavier moving on past Oklahoma State and Tennessee moving on past New Mexico. Then for a spot in the Elite Eight, I'm going to go with an upset pick here. I'm going to go with Kansas State. They've been hot as of late, putting up points like crazy, beating quality teams. I'm going to go with Kansas State pulling off the upset over Purdue, though probably in on Friday's bracketology I'll have Purdue in the Final Four or something crazy like that. But I'm going to go with the four over one. Why not have some fun here? Rhyming accidentally. And then we're going to go with Tennessee here moving on past Xavier. And then for a spot in the Final Four coming out of that regional, I do think I will have Tennessee advancing on to the final four. So now moving on down to the bottom right, we'll have Alabama advancing on past Stetson, Michigan State over West Virginia, Miami hanging on past FAU along with Iowa State over UC Irvine. Then we're gonna go with an upset pick here with Nevada, the 11 seed over the six seed TCU, Gonzaga moving on past Longwood, Rutgers moving on past Clemson, and then Connecticut moving on past Norfolk State. Then for a spot in the Sweet 16, Alabama, We'll be able to beat Michigan State there, though I think by the time the tournament rolls around, Michigan State may make it up to like the four or five line. Then we're going to go with Iowa State moving on past Miami, Gonzaga moving on past Nevada, and then we're going to go with an upset pick here, Rutgers. Rutgers has already proven they can beat anybody in the nation. They went and beat number one Purdue earlier in the season. I think that Rutgers can upset UConn right there. Then for a spot in the Elite Eight, we are going to go with Alabama over Iowa State and then Gonzaga over the magical run of the Scarlet Knights Rutgers. And then for a spot in the Final Four, this would be a fantastic matchup to watch. I think that I want to say they played already this season, Alabama and Gonzaga, though I may be wrong. But I'm going to go with Gonzaga, the farting Mike, like I said, the farting, the fighting Mark Fuse advancing on to the Final Four. So final regional over here, the bottom left one. 
Houston moving on past Milwaukee. Got to go with Indiana over Kentucky right there. Baylor moving on past Max Abnis and Oral Roberts. Virginia moving on past Utah Valley. Missouri moving on past Charleston along with Texas over the Fighting Toothpaste. Illinois, the Fighting Illini pulling off the 10 over 7 over San Diego State and then UCLA over Eastern Washington. Then for a spot in the Sweet 16, we're going to go with Houston over Indiana. Then we are also going to go with Virginia over Baylor. Then Missouri versus Texas. I'm going to go with the upset pick here. The 6 seed Missouri Tigers over Texas. Uh, Texas is trying to figure out what they're going to do in the wake of Chris Beer. I mean, who knows? I'm end up getting Calipari in the offseason or something like that. But Missouri's been playing pretty well this year. I think they can make some noise and move on to the Sweet 16 here. 6 over 3 upset. And then we're going to go with UCLA over Illinois if I can pick UCLA. Then for a spot in the Elite Eight, we are going to go with Houston moving on past Virginia, and then UCLA advancing on past Missouri. So then for a spot in the Final Four, we are going to go with the one seed Houston Cougars advancing on, which sets up a Final Four of one number one seed, only one making it. Then we have a two seed Tennessee, and then two three seeds in Arkansas and Gonzaga. Then for a spot in the National Championship, I'm going to go with Arkansas moving on past Houston. I just think they have so much talent. I think that that team, if fully healthy, are going to be fantastic. Tennessee versus Gonzaga. I'm going to go with Mark Fuse and Gonzaga, which sets up Arkansas and Gonzaga here in the national championship game. And I've, I've switched it up a couple times. I think I had Arkansas winning it on Friday's bracket and then Gonzaga winning it last Tuesday. And I think I'm going to go to Arkansas winning it all here this could all change depending on what happens tonight with like alabama and arkansas i mean i may look stupid maybe alabama just goes out and mows arkansas tonight who knows but as of this moment if fully healthy with the talent arkansas has plus the momentum plus the coaching and eric musselman i think that they could win it all and really a bracket that's wide open this year so there we have it those are my predictions for the bracketology based off of joe Lenardi's thoughts at this point in time let me know your reactions to my predictions. Let me know your own predictions and comments in the comments section below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all later.